you know. Uh, and that's one thing that they've always, uh, you know, I try to control because sometimes, you know, fear comes upon you at sudden moments. Can you say amen? amen. You know, you, you could be, you know, you, it, it could be as simple as, you know, you know you had to put gas in your car. And all of a sudden that light goes on. And now you're calculating in your mind, I get 33 miles to a gallon, I'm about 34 miles away from home, am I gonna make it? You know, and there's no gas station in sight, so you're, you know, all of a sudden you're praying an earnest prayer, Lord, let me make it. You even slow down. Speed limit is 55, now you're going 50, just so you know that you can make it. But the thing is, church, that fear, you don't have to live in fear. One of the things, amen, the, uh, the when I was uh, a disciple in the church, uh, I was going through so many things and not knowing really what's going on. And I was talking to my pastor and he said, well, it's because, you know, you have to understand who you are in Christ and what you are going to do and what you're going to accomplish. And the enemy is trying to cut you off before you even get there. Every single one of you, amen, has a calling. If you do not have a calling, you would have, been, you, you would have gone to a church where you would be lost. You would have gone to a church, and I'm not knocking them. I'm not, hey man, praise God, they got 40,000, they got 4,000, they got, I'm not knocking them. Please don't take it as such. But you can go there and totally just get lost and be happy just attending church. But you see, God's got a specific calling upon your life, and he led you into a ministry like this, where we train, where we tell you, you know, your, your calling is without repentance. Look at Jeremiah, when he said, man, this prophet got beaten, this prophet, amen, man, and it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't even the sin, it was the religious folks that were beating this guy. You know, it, it was a, it was a priest, it was a people, man, that didn't like the way he was preaching, because he was preaching to them and saying, you too, you need to repent, you need to get it going, you need to get it right, we all have to get it right, and how many know, man, we don't enjoy, man, when the preacher preaches, amen, a convicted message and it hits you in the heart. If you know, uh, preaching on sin, preaching on heaven, I don't want to hear that. Give me something that 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 that'll make me feel good. That, as they say, give me a give me a banana split sermon. With extra sermon to make me feel good. But sometimes you need Brussels sprouts. Sometimes you need that broccoli. <laughs> sometimes you need that those, those greens. Amen. You know, Brother Abel trips me out, man, because, man, he, we would have Bible studies at the house, and there'll be fried chicken, there'll be pizza, man. Hey, Abel, you got to get some? No, nah, man, I'm hooking myself up. And what does he have? He has salad. <laughs> he has beans. He's got this, you know, this vegan diet. I don't know what it is, man. But, but the thing about it is, is that he has a plate about this big and about that high. <laughs> and he's starving now, man. But you see the brother, you know, he ain't, man, he's fit, man. And here we are eating all the fried chicken and pizza in front of them going, man, we're getting convicted. Even now we're like, oh, wow, man. <laughs> but in order to be fit, you need, you need that. And, you know, this, you know, one of the places in that you have to understand that when you have a calling, the enemy will always try his best to knock you out of the road that you're on. And he'll use any means necessary. That means he'll even use the religious people. He, Jeremiah, man, they beat him to such a fault, man, he's had it. He, he leaves and he gets out of the city, man. He literally tells God, I, I'm, not, I'm not with this, man. Paraphrasing, of course. He didn't say it that way. <laughs> but I would have, man. I'm not with it. Man, your people don't listen. These people don't listen. That's what he was These people don't listen. Man, I'm telling them, and all they're doing is beating me. It all makes it worse, man. You're watching this. You ever felt like that? <laughs> you're watching this, man. I know you see what's going on. What's the deal? And he goes, amen, and you read Jeremiah, he goes, amen, he goes outside the city, he goes to the wilderness and says, man, I'm done, you hear me, I'm done. And as a pastor, even as a disciple, amen, even as a leader in the church, amen, uh, there have been times, man, when I said those very same words, I am done. You hear me, I am done. I have my friends and my so-called friends in church backstabbing me now. I'm not even worried about the sinners. I'm not worried about the new converts, man. You know, I'm worried about the Savior. Man, good Lord, man, what did I do? You know, and I'm done, Lord. You hear me? I'm done. Yeah. Just sitting there. Man, I just, man, man, had my resignation papers in my back pocket. <laughs> After church service, I'm going to hand my papers to the, to the pastor, my goodbye letter. 
They just said, I'm done. See you. Bye. You know, and, 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 here, and here's the deal because I was the type of disciple that if you put me into the corner and you say, guard this with your life, don't let anybody come in, that's where I'll be. You come back five days from now and I'll be in that post. That's what I was. That's, that's what I am. Amen. If you tell me, you know what, man, the enemy's going to come through this way. All you got is three shots, but there's ten of them. I'm going to figure out how to kill ten with three shots. So in that note, amen, sometimes my pastor would be like, you know, okay, I, I got him. I got him. And I, I don't have to worry about him. And I'm saying this to you guys for this specific reason. Forgive me if I don't see every trial and tribulation that you go through and don't come to you and give you a hug or a pat on the back. I'm sorry. I really am. I don't, mean that, I don't say that to be facetious. I don't say that to be troubling. I don't say that to be any type of uh, 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 smart alecky. I'm human. I'm human. I will get to you, though, because sooner or later the Holy Spirit's going to come and tell me. You know? And so, you know, and, but, you know, I, I, I get, but I, I was always been the one. And then I realized and how hurtful I was to myself and not approaching my pastor. Yeah. Because now I'm just being there by myself and I'm thinking nobody cares. But no, it's not nobody cares. It's that they trust you to be there. Mm -hmm. See, as grown men and women of God, and if you're a leader in this place, hey, I take it for granted that you're okay until you come up to me. And tell me, hey, you know what, can I talk to you? Hey, no problem. You know? But I say that, amen, because sometimes what happened, man, what happened to me is that when I said, man, I've had it, I'm done. These people don't listen. I think of Jeremiah, man, who went out to the wilderness, and that's exactly what I did. I took, back then, it was an AM, FM cassette tape. <laughs> that's what I said, Mikey. <laughs> Go to your museum, you'll see it. Along with a pay phone. And vinyl records. And if you really want to go way back, A track. <laughs> a track, if you don't know what A track, A track was a CD back in the day. That was the clearest recording that you could ever hear. Problem with A track was there was no rewind. <laughs> so if you wanted to hear your favorite song, you had to go through the whole song. <laughs> and so it was, it was, I took that, I went to the beach and I was, I was praying and I said, God, Something crept in me that I don't know, that that's, I can't see. I don't know what's happening here. And at that point when I was praying, somebody just walked by me and I got startled. Amen. And, you know, I kind of jumped and the Lord says, there's your problem. It's that fear that you have. The fear of not making it. The fear of not being good enough. The fear of, man, Failure. The fear, amen, that, that the devil got you through, that you're standing still. And when you're standing still, how many of you know, if I'm just standing here, not saying a word and just looking at you, I can tell when, when, you're, when you guys are about ready to fall asleep. If I don't say anything, I just look at you. But at the same time, when you're looking at me like that too, you're focusing on what I'm doing. You're like, I'm not going to be the one. I'm not going to be the one. I'm not going to be the one. You know, you don't hear what I'm saying. I'm not going to be and if I wait long enough, man, we have a stare down, you're going to be like, <laughs> See, but that's what fear does to you when it has you stand still. You start looking at everything else and start being critical of everything else. Yes. I can look at, you know, I, I, I can look at, uh, and I'm going to pick a, a, a neighbor because some of you guys get hurt. You know, I can look at him and just stare at him and go, his hat is off. His his penalty is off. His, and we start criticizing. Because now fear got us standing still. We don't want to look elsewhere, so we're focused on one side. Now we can become hypercritical of the church. Why does the church always do this? Does Pastor know that he can get in trouble for having this meeting? <laughs> does Pastor know the seriousness of this COVID-19 <laughs> this is going on and we become critical and the Lord told me this he said man you got to get out of your fear because when you're in movement you're too busy in movement to worry about the little stuff to worry about man if my hair is parted right 
To worry about if the chairs are lined up right. To worry about, man, uh, man, man, I wonder if I can take the toilet paper from the bathroom. <laughs> You, do you hear what I'm saying? You know, when, when fear has you standing still, you become critical because you're still. But when you're moving, you're too busy fighting. You're too busy, man, in the battle. You're too busy praying. You're too busy fasting. You're too busy searching God. You're too busy, amen, to, meant to be worried about that. And Jeremiah forgot about that because when he was preaching, the fire of God would come upon him. That's why when he went out to the desert and said, that's done, he said, but man, I told the Lord I was quitting. But all of a sudden, I can't stop. I won't stop. Because it's like fire shot up in my bones. i got to go back. i got to tell the people. It's in my heart to do so. God gave me a mandate. And he goes back to the center of the square. And he tells them, I want to tell you, know my friend, that Jesus Christ, amen, is the God, is the Lord, is the Savior, is a can do God. And if you're in this place, amen, fearful of this disease, fearful of this germ, remember of this COVID-19, my God will find a way where there is no way. My God will make an open door open for you to step in. Man, and he got fired up. Church, in Psalms 91, there's eightfold promises of protection in Psalms 91. Hallelujah. Are you with me? I hope so, because you ain't going nowhere. <laughs> I used to go to jail, amen, to preach. I don't tell them that. I said, man, I'm preaching to a captive audience. <laughs> Y'all ain't going nowhere. <laughs> Not for a while. <laughs> amen. So turn with me to Psalms 91. Say amen when you get there. So say amen when you get there. Amen. Say it to Joey. Brother, listen to me. Hallelujah. <laughs> Psalms 91. <laughs> oh, no wonder. Say that doesn't sound right. Amen. Uh, um, let's see. Let's go to verse 9. We'll start there. Let me read all the way up to 16 and we'll break it down. Amen. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even most high your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, nor shall plague, whew, nor shall plague, <laughs> nor shall any Plague. Can I get an amen for that one? No, say any plague. Come near your dwelling. Amen. We say, for you shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in your, all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the lion, young lion and the serpent, you shall tread on their foot. And verse 14 says, because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will, I will deliver him and honor him with long life. I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Father, be glorified, O oh Lord. I thank you, God, for your word in the mighty name of Jesus Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Eight full promises. Amen. Finishing off Psalm 91. It says in verse 14, because he lovingly devoted to me, and this is, a, a, I believe, in a homeless Christian, amen, a version. I will deliver him. I will protect him because he has known my name. When he calls to me, I will answer him, and I will be with him, and I will rescue him and give him honor. I will satisfy him with long life and show him. Amen. Eight promises. He said, uh, uh, he said, I will, I will rescue you. Yes. How many of you know, amen, when you're rescued, you're rescued because your life is in danger. Yes. Yes. You don't get rescued because your life isn't in danger. Oh, man, oh, dog, I rescue you. For what? <laughs> you're going to buy that Twinkie, bro. <laughs> man, I want to rescue you. 
Rescue him, it means, it means your life was in peril. Your life was in danger, amen. Your life was in a place of almost destruction. So you were rescued. When we, when, uh, when, uh, when you see any show and they say, oh yeah, we're going to have a rescue team. Or when you see, amen, a lifeguard and they rescued that person in the middle of the ocean, amen. That person was about ready to die. So God says here, man, this is one of his promises. I will rescue you. When your life seems to be in danger, when your life, amen, uh, you know, and, and, and the, the loving goodness of God is how many can remember even before you were saved, uh, man, he rescued you. Huh? Driving drunk. How many know, man, you know, you, you, you could have died. Many times over. If we were involved in drugs, we could have OD'd many times over. If we were involved in alcohol, man, many times, man, uh, man we would have been dead. Or even, amen, uh, man, stone cold sober, man, and, and, and we almost got to that accident. You don't even know how, man, you missed it. You didn't even know how, man, what was it that kept, I remember, uh, man, going to work and I had to, uh, uh, you know, I had my daughter Nicole and her uncle with me and we're driving down 14 and I was switching lanes and I didn't see this car. And Nicole said, watch out, there's a car. And we, we, you know, we both tried to merge in the same lane and I swore back. But then my car started going this way, man. But thank God, you know, we got control. And even my, uh, her uncle was like, man, I don't see how you got control of the car. I said, simply said, man, we prayed. We prayed for trial and mercies. Amen. So we, you know, so he rescued us out of that. Amen. Church, we have a God, amen, that will rescue you out of your, your most perilous time. I don't even mean, amen, being life in danger. I'm talking about times, man, where you can't handle life in general. Sometimes even when I'm in marriage, amen, where you, all of a sudden you can't stand each other. You know, and, 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 and I, I, I trip out because I watch some of these, you know, little clips, amen, and one of the things, that we, hey, remember our vows to each other. Remember our vows, amen, see, that's what keeps me going, because I, man, I vow before witnesses, before my pastor, before my family, before my friends. Before my wife to me, for better, which is easy. <laughs> what you gonna make that for better? Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. <laughs> what you ain't cooking today? <laughs> We're having survival food. <laughs> That's for worse, for better, for worse, for richer. Oh man, it's fun. Yeah. It's got paid. Go to movies, let's eat out, whatever, whatever. It's all good. For poor, greens and rice in Jesus Christ. <laughs> when we don't have, see, when we don't have, all of a sudden, not only are you are you a, 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 a are you a worse person, <laughs> but you're not this, you're not that, you're not this. You know, it's money. It's funny. And how money can evoke so many emotions. When you have it, you're happy. Everybody's good. You know, you're looking good today. Oh, you're looking great today. When you don't have it, everybody's bad. Get away from me. You disgust me today. I only have 45 cents in my pocket. Leave me alone. Come back and talk to me when I have a dollar fifty. For better, for worse, for richer, for poorer. In sickness, in sickness, and in health. There are times, church, amen, that God will rescue you in those times, in those negative times, if you will just be still and know that He is God. Amen. If you don't sit still and you're always squirming, if you're old, and sometimes, and I tell my wife this, I don't like to speak out of anger because I know myself, my heart, and how wicked this heart can be when angry and blurt out something. And let me tell you, friend of mine, when you blurt out something, you cannot take it back. Even with the phrase, I'm only, I'm only kidding. Yep. Even if you apologize later on, those words linger in the individual. Those words, amen, hit you. And you can say, I forgive you. And you can say, I forgot about it. But the enemy doesn't forget because he has now equal realm to those words and will bring it back to that person's memory. Yes, yes. I know. That's why I don't like to speak right off the bat. 
if you make me angry, I will have to say, I'll talk to you later. Because right now, I'll pull out all those aces I have in my pocket and just throw them at you. Having nothing to do with that present argument. Remember back in 1963? Was he even born then? Oh, okay. Uh, let's go back to uh, 1977. What? <laughs> but he said he will rescue you. And when you're still, Amen. when you're right, I don't need any, any, any protection when I'm right. <laughs> I'm right. I don't need to prove myself I'm right. I don't need bells to go off and say, you won. Yeah. I tell the Lord, vindicate me. Hey, if I'm wrong, forgive me. Yeah. But if I'm right, vindicate me. Search my heart and know what my motives were. Yeah. Was never harming anybody. Was never harming man. But Lord, man, you you see. That's when He rescues me. Lord, what did I do? Lord, man, help me, man. Why am I in this mess? And simply, God, man, just me tell you, be still and know that I'm God. Amen. That's the hardest thing to do. I can't get my grandson Carmelo to sit still for more than two se two minutes, man, if, if he's not taking a nap. He'll go, man. That boy will be like, man. And, you know, and Tamir is more mellow. But he has his moments when he just wants to scream out. Ah! <laughs> That's what you call their niece. Their niece, you said. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, kids are like that, right? We, they can't sit still. But when they can't sit still, you can't tell them anything, man. You know, hey, come here. Come here. Come here. <laughs> hey, don't forget to pick that door. You know, that's how we are, amen. When, when, we, when we're trying to think, how can I get out of this? How, what can I do to rip? Man, uh, uh, you know, if, if you've ever been on a riptide and a rip current, amen, uh, you know it's impossible for you to swim back to the shore. But yet, because of panic, you'll try. You'll try to go head on, and they tell you it will not work because the tide is stronger than you. No matter how good of a swimmer you are, you're talking about, you're swimming and maybe you're putting about maybe, maybe what, five pounds of force into that wave. That wave is kicking you back at triple, quadruple the time. So you're putting five four, four, uh, of pressure. That wave is hitting you back with 25% of pressure. You're not going to swim back. But that's how we are. We'll swim, we'll swim, we'll swim until we're tired. And that's when people just lose it. If you kept your mind, amen, they tell you, swim parallel to the beach until you can find a way to swim back in. God is telling you, be still. Just be still. Wait a minute. Hold on. I will rescue you. My word says so. I will rescue you. In this time of trouble, amen, you know, I, I just heard that this individual, man, they, 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 they had a video or something, amen, I think it was able to, man, that they were, this lady had a, a shopping cart full of toilet paper, shopping cart, and this old lady asked her, man, can I have one, one pack, and she said, no, what are you going to do with all those toilet paper? When this thing rails down and you look at your closet, because there's no room in there because you have 13,000 rolls of toilet paper. What are you going to try to do? Sell it? Heck, no. They're going to look at you. How much you buy it for? $5. I'll give you a dollar. That's what you get. I will rescue you. God said, I will rescue you. If you be still. But sometimes we refuse to be still. No, we want to do it our way. Especially the guy, man, man. No, I'll do it my way. What were you going to do? I don't know how to make money. Yeah, bro, but that was a legal way. Oh, <laughs> let me tell you something, amen. I I, uh, I know this uh, the individual, amen. And my wife brought this point, man. He used to, as a youth, he would all he 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 you know made money illegally, illegally. But he knew what to do with his money. He bought cars. He always had nice clothes. As a youngster, as a teenager, now saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. This guy owns his own business. Oh, check that own businesses. He has more than one business. He's still making money, but he's making money the right way. God, God will take who you are out in the world and turn it around for his good. But it's still you. If you are a hustler out in the world, you can be a hustler for God. If you were a man, you know, and I've seen men, musicians come through the doors, amen, and, and man, they're great musicians. Sing in clubs, 
make money, man. I have a friend right now, and he makes 500 bucks a night just by playing drums. He makes his own hours. He can be hired to do. He can hire be hired to be a studio musician at about five to ten thousand dollars a session. But he said no, <laughs> because he's been down that road and he's fearful of that road. Listen to me, money, if you're not careful, if you think that that's your salvation, if you think that's your God, money will just afford you to do more of the things you hate to do. If that is your God. Because mammon is, is a son of a gun, man. Never satisfied. God said he will rescue you. Amen. Amen. Second promise, he will protect you. He will protect you. When Justin was but a youth, amen, about maybe five, six years old, we had this dog named Mister. Mister was a pit bull, red nose pit, weighing about maybe 140. Justin weighed 50. But he would walk this dog because this dog was canine certified. He would walk this dog down the street of Echo Park Avenue. And he'd be ahead of me. I wouldn't be too far. He'd be ahead of me. And he would tell Mr. Heal! 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 <laughs> Mr. is just walking right beside him. He's not even going anywhere, but this, I guess he's like barking that day. Heal! And Mr. is right there, just right beside him. Just right beside him. And he would stop. Sit! And Mr. would sit. Now, a lot of people would see that little boy with that humongous dog, do you think somebody was just going to come in over there and just try to pet either that dog or that kid? No, that was a protector right there. That was a visible protector. That was a visible protector. My brother-in-law had him one time, and this guy came in. He was going to clean the rug, but he started, he wanted to, uh, uh, I guess it was a sham, you know. You know, we'll clean it, we'll clean two rooms for $35. Next thing you know, they were charging him like 150 or something. And they wouldn't leave the house until she called him a dog. Mister! I said, sit! And Mister sat, and he stared straight at the guy. Well, that dude took off running, man. Forget the money, he took off running. And to me, amen, I bring that up to, my, to memory because that's how God is. When we call upon the Lord, man, or when God protects us. Uh, I remember a story that my, my, my pastor said that he was cruising down the street and these guys came up next to him, and these gangbangers, and they came up next to him, and started mad-dogging him and doing all this madness and everything, and he started praying, and then they, they, they went, and then they caught up to another, uh, they caught up to each other at another stoplight, and he knew that they were there, and he looked at them, and all of a sudden, all the guys in the car were just looking with straight heads. <laughs> you know, and he was just looking at them, going, what, what happened? He was just looking at them, and then man, a, a revelation came to him. He says, I bet you, when I prayed for protection, God gave me a carload of angels that were mad dog and men. Yeah. What's up? <laughs> and they saw that, and they said, don't look over there, man. Don't look over there. <laughs> them about to look like they're going to kill us, man. <laughs> you know? And that's how, man, when God protects you, amen, even the, even, amen, the gates of hell, even the, the even, any demon, amen, that looks at you to do a harm, amen, will, will, uh, don't touch them. Man, you see the head of God all over them. You see, man, you see who he has around them? So vital for you parents, amen, when your kids go to school, when you go, man, to pray for God's protection around them. God's protection around them. I remember we were in Chicago in a conference. We get a call. There was a shooting in a lot of going to Highland High. There was a shooting in Highland High. I'm over in Chicago, man. God, I know you're protecting me. Man, I pray. I always pray, man. Lord, protect my kids, God. Put a head, put your angels around them. Let no harm come to them. Protect their minds. Protect, protect their bodies. Protect their souls. Amen. Uh, man, make, man, man, give them divine protection. That even when they're playing, they don't get seriously hurt. Notice I said seriously hurt because kids need to get hurt. Kids need to bump their heads, man. Why? Because it, it, they just do. They come home laughing. What happened to your head? Why are you bleeding? I know, right? <laughs> I hit a wall, Mom. I hit a wall. They're really? You know, Justin would come, used to come home, man. He's like, hey, what happened? We'll play tap and football. Oh, you're fine. <laughs> but God will protect you. Amen. 
Really, I can go on, man, with, with so many times that I know that God has protected me. Yes. Outreaches that we did. Man, going to people's houses. We had an outreach in these hotel rooms, man, and, and, and it freaked me out because, you know, they're knocking on the doors, man, and, and if you come or with somebody, man, they say, oh, well, come in and tell me about this God. I said, don't you dare go into that hotel room. But I wasn't there, but they, lo and behold, they said, you know, and no, you know, we were just witnessing to them. I said, man, God's protecting us. Yes, amen. God is protecting us. God is protecting you and I, amen. Even in this time of the crisis, even in this time, amen, of the so-called, you know, virus, you know. Even in the so-called time of fear, God is protecting you and I. Amen. Why will we have to fear? Yes. Now, granted, I'm not going to go swimming with the sharks and say, Lord, protect me. <laughs> and cut myself and go, okay, protect me, Lord. <laughs> no, I'm not going to do that either. Come on, let's use wisdom, amen. But protection, amen, man. Every time we go out, we have a target in our head. The enemy was just to do what? Heal, steal, destroy. But let's not forget the other part of, of that scripture. Amen. It says that God can give life and life in abundance. Amen. I mean, no, abundant life doesn't mean that you're living in fear. Pastor Jonathan from Philippines told me, amen, uh, uh, he messaged me, he said, we're allowed one person per family to go out, just one. But they gave him a quarantine pass to have, amen, a, a small gathering in his church. That's how severe it is over there in the Philippine Islands. Here, we still congregate outside. But only one person, only one person per family. Now, how many know in countries like that, if you get caught out, you will be busted. You will get busted, amen. He said, we will protect you. Number three, he will answer you. Amen. Ever pray to God, amen, and amen, and you, you think that you don't have an answer, but you know, you're really looking in the wrong place? <laughs> How many of us have ever prayed this, amen? You know, Lord, if you don't want me to get loaded, take, take the wheel, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't want me going anywhere, you know, Lord, you know, make my car stop. <laughs> Come on. So what happens, amen, your car stalls out. Oh, Lord, what are you doing? <laughs> he will answer you. He will answer you through the reading of his word. Yeah. Take my word for it. If you read this, you'll get some answers. Yes. 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 Oh, don't take my word for it. Find out for yourself. Read it. Yeah. Read it. You'll get the answers. He'll answer you, amen, through the sermons. No matter if it was me, Brother Abel, Brother Darnese, Brother Justin, Rudy Machaca. Mike, message doesn't matter, amen. He will answer you, amen, through message. He will answer you through prayer. If you would just be still for a moment. How many know God won't answer you, man, if you're, man, if you're too busy crying? Man, when, my, my, when, when, when Lila would try to tell me something, but she's crying, I have no idea what you're saying. And I'm talking to her like that. I have no idea what you're saying. You know, she's not going to understand, I have no idea what you're saying. What she doesn't understand is to stop crying. Stop crying so I can hear you. And then when she stops crying, I still need an interpretation. <laughs> so I ask the mom, what does he want? Sometimes we're too busy crying and crying. And Christ is saying, okay, stop your crying so I can answer you. I will answer you. He says so. I will answer you. Your prayers will be answered. Now understand this, brothers and sisters, and men and women of the jury. Sometimes the answer you want, maybe not... You know what did you expect it? Or maybe it's in the form of another way, amen, of you of him telling you. Maybe, amen, that God is telling you to wait. How many of you know we don't want to hear that answer? Lord, I want patience, I want it now. <laughs> Sometimes amen, he tells you, hold on. I can't do that for you yet because you're too emotional. You're too emotional. And if I give it to you now, you receive it emotionally. And that's what does that mean? That means that there's going to be no gratitude. You're just going to be like, oh man, and then you got it. You read the story of the prodigal son when he's telling his father, man, I want my inheritance. I want it now. But as, as you understand, he mean, if you do a study of that, really what he was saying is, dad, I wish you were dead already. Because you didn't get your inheritance while the person was still alive. But he wanted it now. He says, I want my inheritance. I want it now. 
Imagine that. God, man, Dad, I wish you were dead, man. I, I want my money now. So the father says, all right, fine. Fine. But when he was given to him in emotion, because that's what it was, how, how, how happy he was to receive it, how much money he had, kind of like our income tax check. Lord, let my income tax check come in the other day. And it came in. You're so happy, man, to receive it. You forgot to take care of business. By yourself, amen, uh, you know, nice, you know, a stereo system or whatever it is, amen, and all of a sudden that different colored envelope came in the mail saying, you owe this bill. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Sometimes God is saying, man, I need you to calm down. I will answer you. But what state of emo what an emotional state are you in when he answers you? Sometimes, man, you can be praying in anger. Don't tell me that you have it. Uh, Lord, get him. <laughs> what? Get him, Lord, get him. <laughs> Look the flyers. Threaten their tires. <laughs> Lord, cut out their hot water. <laughs> you can be bringing anger, man. You know, man, Lord. Take my life. I can't stand this no more. Desperation. You don't know what you're saying. You're emotional. And God needs you to calm down. Amen. God needs, but he will answer you. And sometimes the answer is, calm down. Calm down. Assess the situation here. Check out what's happening. You know, my, uh, we were uh, out in the we had a picnic out in the mountains with some friends of ours one day, and we decided to take a, a, a walk, you know, a hike. And we're walking through this little brook. But we came across these mud wasps. And if you don't know what they are, they're wasps that their nest is in the mud. Mm -hmm. And so we're walking through, and then all of a sudden we stumbled upon their nest. And they're going everywhere. And there was my daughter, Alana, my wife, and then me at the back. And so they started coming out. They're just protecting their nest, amen. They're flying into Alana's hair. Alana's screaming, you know, into my hair. My wife's trying to get out of her hair while they're blunting around her. I'm in the back getting stung like crazy. <laughs> and I'm telling them, let's move on. Just keep going. <laughs> I wasn't like, I couldn't, I couldn't bring myself to go, would you move? I'm getting stung here. This is my This is my why? Because they were emotional that time. And if I started yelling, they turn around and yell at me and go, man, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Just keep, just keep moving. Just keep moving. If we get out of their nest, they'll leave us alone. Let's just keep moving. I didn't say all that. I just said, let's just keep moving. So we moved, man, you know, and we got through it. You know, Alain didn't get stung. He didn't get into my wife. It was all me, you know. Hey, but here's the thing. I wanted to tell you that that's not true. Because <laughs> that was kind of that was kind of a prayer for me that if I was to also be in that state of yelling, no one would move. Because hysterics will beget hysterics. Yeah. You see one one person, if you don't believe me, amen, one day, and I don't do it. But I bet you one day if I'm preaching out here and you see Kevin just look up like that and start running from the back, y'all are gonna be like, and you'll run too. You'll meet outside, but where are we running? You can't really just tell you, I don't know how to use the bathroom. <laughs> I don't know why you guys are running, but I really had to go. <laughs> hysterics, you get hysterics. Amen. One of us had to be calm, man. And maybe guess what? Well, we got over it. Calm down. God will answer you. Be patient on the answer. Sometimes you can't give it to you because, man, you re we really are emotional. We're emotional rats. We want the money now. We want the answer now. We want the clothes now. We want this now. We want, we want them to get hurt now. <laughs> you don't want them to pay a price. But sometimes because God wants to protect you, guess what? He already knows. Amen. He already knows. Amen. It says here number four, and I'll go on quickly. It says, I'll be with you in trouble. So he'll rescue you, amen, when your life is in peril. He'll protect you, amen, he'll answer you. 
But man, all of a sudden, remember when we said, man, sudden things happen. Sometimes things happen. And he will be with you in times of trouble. Amen. He'll be with you in times when you need comfort. He'll be with you in the times, amen, when you need some kind of backing. He will need to be with you, amen, when you, when you get some bad news. When you go to the doctors, amen, and something's brewing in your body, and, you, and, 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 and you're an emotional wreck, he'll be with you right there. He'll be with you right there. In times of trouble, in times where, you know what, man, like a, a few weeks ago, amen, my my. My sister calls me, my brother calls me and says, hey, dad is in ICU. He said, for what? We don't know yet. My dad is 90-something years old. Amen. They took to the hospital. Man, I have to perk up. I have to understand, man. Okay, well, what's going on? We don't know. Okay, what are they, they going to do? Well, they're going to run some tests. Okay. I had to rely on God. I'm not going to panic. I can't, you know, I can't throw myself in that emotional state. I have other things I need to do. I do not I do not dislike my father. I love my father. My father was a good dad. He did the best he could, man, with all the children he had. Amen. And the way we turned out, I say he did a darn good job. And so, man, I know this I, I'm not, you know, I'm not unlovable, man, where it's like, you know, you don't think he is. I care about my dad. But I know my Christ, my heavenly father, is much better in handling this than I am. My Heavenly Father can handle this better than I could ever handle it. So I have to rely on Him and call on Him in time of my trouble. And rely on this promise that in time of trouble, in time of those serious things, uh, man, that He will be with me. When, I, my, when my brother passed away, amen, that was a sign of trouble for me. Because now all these emotions come to me. All these things that I should have or did not do, amen, in times of trouble, folks, in times where you doubt your own salvation, in times where you doubt your own existence, when you doubt your own being, when you think you're good enough, when you think you're bad enough, in times, man, when you question everything about God, God says, I'll be with you in time of trouble, because the devil is a liar, the devil, amen, is a stinking liar, and then he will be, God will be with you in those times and say, listen, I am here for you. When you rest your head upon the shoulders and the bosom of the almighty loving God, you find comfort. You find comfort. In the times, amen, when you don't think that you can take another step, man, you, you'll find comfort. In times, amen, when you think that, you know what, there's no way I can just, because he's with you in times of trouble. He's with you in times of trouble. He's with you when you're in the middle of the ocean, amen, trying to Trying to battle that red tide. He's with you. Number five says, I will deliver you. Just like when Mikey loves the delivery of pizza. I will deliver you. I will take you from your situation. I will deliver you out of the hands of the enemy. I will take you out of the hand of problems. I will take you out of the pits of hell. I will take you in the times, amen, of loneliness, in the times, man, of, of weariness, in the times when you think that the enemy is around you and there's no escape. I will take you. I will deliver you out of that. I will deliver you into my hands. I will deliver you to a safe place. I will deliver you to my salvation. I will deliver you. That's what he says right here. I will deliver you. I will kick you out of there, man. I, I will take you out of that pit. Amen. That's what I promise you, man. I'll take you out of that pit. You don't need to stay there. But sometimes, man, we don't want to be delivered. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we like that pit. Yeah. Leave me alone. I'm going through it. <laughs> <laughs> Two months later, how you doing? Still going through it. <laughs> man, did you run out of gas? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You read Psalm 23, what does he say? He says, man, as I go through, as I walk through. He didn't say, as I stood there and pitched the tent. And made my dwelling in the valley of the shadow of death. <laughs> he didn't say that. He stood still there. He didn't say, he says, man, as I go through, as I walk through, as I travel through. In other words, as I move through. Yes, yes. One of my pastors used to say to me, man, when you're going through hell, keep going and pick up anybody else that's decided to stay there. <laughs> you got to keep going, man. You got to keep going. I will deliver you, man. But we know sometimes we don't want to be delivered. Sometimes we look because we think we have an excuse. 
speaking to a young man, man, didn't know where he was coming from, man, he was trying to talk to me, all of a sudden I realized, man, God's telling me he's relying on his own works. And that confirmed it to me, he says, yeah, I know, God man, gave his only son. Well, yeah, that's what he did, but what are you doing? Yeah. What are you doing? Do you actually think that you're going to go before the Lord and tell him, well, Lord, it's your fault, you gave me a free will. Yeah, you were free to choose me, but you freely chose the devil. Yep. Away from me. Sometimes, amen, we don't want to be delivered, amen, because we got, we found a comfort zone. Because when you're there, you don't think that God expects anything from you. Mm -hmm. Oh, here I am. I'm just waiting on the Lord. It's like waiting for a bus, amen, when you're going to work. Your bus came and you didn't get on it. Now I can call my boss and tell him I'm be late because the bus was late. Little did you know that you, you tried that excuse already and your boss, your boss was waiting by the bus stop. Me and this one either. <laughs> See, God will give us, amen, you know, he will deliver us if we want to be delivered. If you don't want to be delivered, man, you're going to stay there for a long time. Sometimes you stay there too long, you start being so miserable that you start, <laughs> you start, you, you start hating things. Hmm? You'll blame the church. You'll blame me. You'll blame my wife. You'll blame my grandkids. <laughs> you'll blame Darnese because oh, Darnese is the head usher do you know that he never said hello to me <laughs> there's Darnese running around because he only has a few ushers to make sure everything is out but you have no mercy on that one do you <laughs> sister Jane comes amen and the cleaning crew comes amen 30 minutes to 45 minutes before prayer starts man to make sure that everything is cleaned everything is made presentable yeah do you even think about that when you come in? Or do you look at a window because a kid just touched it? Oh, look, they forgot. <laughs> you know, the thing is, church, man, we come in, like I said, when we say we will rescue you, man, we will deliver you if you want to be delivered. If you want to be delivered. But if you don't want to be delivered, amen, you'll stay there and just stay there, man, stay there in misery. For me, I hate that. Lord, give me what I'm supposed to learn. Give it to me now, man, so I can get out of here. Mm -hmm. I like good times. <laughs> my, my wife and I, would go before we go to sleep, man, we look at a funny video, and we're there cracking up, laughing. So we go to sleep with a smile on, and we're laughing. Sometimes I still have dreams about what we saw, and I'm laughing in my dream. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a thin line between laughing it's sounding like I'm choking to death. Because <laughs> then my wife will give me an elbow. And you're like, yeah, I was laughing. What happened? <laughs> Some of you haven't even laughed that this much in over a long time. Man, if you were to continue laughing that way, you'd break your face. <laughs> I will deliver you. I will honor you. Oh, man, imagine God honoring you. In the book of Esther, you read it, amen. Haman thought that when the king was asking him, hey, let me ask you something, Haman. What should I do when I want to honor a man? Haman, in all his pride, thought, man, he was talking about himself. <laughs> oh, if I were you, and you want to honor, because he's thinking that it was going to be him, I'll make him ride your best chariot. Parade him down the street. Let people see him. Call out his name. Hey, ma, ma, hey, you know, man, that. He goes, okay. What you said to do, is go ahead and do it for Mordecai. He hated Mordecai. The humility that he must have felt. The humility that he must have felt with the man, the, the, the man he despised is the one getting the glory. The anger that the devil must feel when God honors you. When God honors you because he says, man, look, wait a minute. What would you do if you want to hire a man? Man, make him ride your best chariot. Show him off. Tell people, man, that you're approved of this individual. Tell everybody that you're on. Imagine, man, you riding in the choice chariot between the enemies, amen. Between your enemies, between God and between God and the devil. And the devil's looking at you go room. But God say, hell. Honor the man and woman of God. Honor the sacrifice. Honor him. And not only in the spiritual realm, 
church, but I'm talking about the physical realm. Uh, imagine, amen, your enemies, the people, man, you'll always be a drunk. You're nothing but a drunk. You're nothing but this. You're nothing but that. You're nothing but this. All of a sudden, you're owning your own business and they're coming to you. Hey, can you hire me? Say, what? <laughs> yeah, can you hire me? Man, I see what God's doing to you. Laban, amen, to, to Jacob. I know that God's blessing you, and I am blessed because of you. Honor. Before no other man gave honor to us, man, before I was like, man, you're going to honor you. Honor you for what? Huh? Honor you for this? Get out of here, man. You're nothing but, you fill in the blank. But now God said, man, no, I'm honoring my kids. I'm honoring them. I'm adorning them with new clothes, with a ring on their finger, with a crown on their head, saying, this is my son. This is my daughter. Hail all you enemies of God. Bow the knee. For they are rightful heirs to my kingdom, to my throne. Come on, can you hear the fanfare of the angels sounding the trumpet and saying, man, uh, here comes Joey. Uh, bow down, you enemies of God. Uh, here comes the man of God. And you must bow down. Oh, my goodness. Come on, church. Hallelujah. Let's give them all the praise. Amen. 